Well, hello there everyone and welcome back. We are here today to go through a review of the Varus Doom Knight class. Hopefully all the buffs and nerfs are now out of the way. So this is how the class should stand for a little bit. Overall, I have given it the S tier. Solo is an S, support is an A, PvP is a B and farming is a D. It is also worth mentioning that this class does have a decay with it. So that is very useful if you're planning to take it into ultra battles as well as all the debuffing that it applies to your enemy. As always, I'm gonna start with the class skills. So if this bit does not interest you, I have time stamped the video so you can skip on to the next chapter. Okay, so Necrotic Blade is your auto attack. You strike your target with your Doom Blade. It applies weakened, reducing your target's outgoing damage by 15% for 20 seconds. We then have Soul Fracture. Ravage your target's soul, severely crippling their defenses. Applies Fractured Soul, reducing your target's damage resistance by 50% and physical and magical resistance by 30% for 8 seconds. If Unleashed Doom is active, that is off of your skill 5. Apply Shattered Soul, reducing your target's physical and magical resistance by an additional 30% for 5 seconds. If Darkness is Gathered is applies, again also comes off your skill 5, but we'll come into all of this later on. Cataclysm will apply, increasing your crit chance by 20% and crit damage by 50% for 20 seconds. Then we have a Life Carve. So, carve into your target, draining life from them and applying Lingering Darkness, a damage over time for 6 seconds. If Unleashed Doom is active, applies Necrotic Warmth, restoring your HP over time for 5 seconds. If Darkness is gathered, applies Veil of Darkness, increasing your damage resistance by 50% for 20 seconds. Skill 4 is Doom Spikes, applies Spiked, reducing your target's haste and dodge by 15% for 8 seconds, can't miss. If Unleashed Doom is active, applies Skewered, reducing your target's haste and dodge by additional 15% for 5 seconds while also stunning them for 1 second. If Darkness is gathered, applies Demise, increasing your outgoing damage by 15% for 20 seconds. And then lastly we have Unleash Doom. Release Calamitous Shadows upon your target, inflicting them with Decay which negates all non-lifesteal healing they receive for 3 seconds. If you have 10 stacks of Doom, they are consumed to apply Unleash Doom, empowering your skills and increasing your outgoing damage by 25% and haste by 50% for 8 seconds. This cannot miss. If Unleash Doom is activated or is already active, you gather darkness, empowering the next seal you use except Necrotic Blade with an additional effect. Let us begin then with looking at the base class. So those of you who do not have Forge can expect the class to perform in this sort of way, especially when you're going along soloing. The combo you want to use is 2345, 234, 2345, and then you're ending on 234, 2354. So the reason you want to be using that very specific combo is due to the Doom mechanic. If you look at the auras underneath my name, you'll see the far right hand side one is stacking up quite quickly. That is the stacks of Doom. As soon as you get to 10 stacks of doom, skill 5 is going to consume them and that is when you start applying your additional effects. Which effect however will apply is down to what you press after skill 5 has consumed those stacks. So if you press 2 first, you'll be using your soul fracture skill which is all about debuffing your target. If you were to press skill 3 which is life carve, what you'll be doing then is getting your restoring your HP over 5 seconds, that essentially be your heal. And if you press skill 4 which is your doom spikes, you'll be applying skewered and that reduces your target's haste dodge by additional 15% bloody bloody blah. Now, very importantly, what skill 5 does is when you use it the first time after it consumes them 10 stacks, it's going to apply Unleash Doom. It, once you have Unleash Doom active and you cycle back round to 5 using that combo we've been using, what will then happen is as soon as you hit skill 5, you're going to gather darkness. And yet again, depending on whether you press 2, 3 or 4, we'll apply those secondary effects that we went through earlier on in the video. So that'll be for applying Cataclysm if you do skill 2, if you're doing Life Carve, i.e. skill 3, that will apply Veil of Darkness, and then if you were to hit skill 4, it would apply Demise. It does sound quite complicated, but it does open this class up depending on how you want to play with it. You have various different play styles, whether you want to go aggressive, defensive, or kind of debuff the enemy, maybe more for ultras when you're doing those kinds of fights. As you may have noticed in the background, we've actually got some very nice damage a second coming off of Dauntless. If you're not running Dauntless, you're probably more around the 5,000 damage a second mark, and for free players, and if you just can't be bothered to get Forged, that is actually pretty decent. Sadly, however, it's not really a class that comes out that I use typically very often. It is one of those that, as, as an adaptable playstyle, it can be quite enjoyable to use, and it is versatile in loads of different situations. As we said earlier, thanks to having a Decay actually on skill.
skill 5 with this class and also having the ability to quite strongly debuff enemies it does make it playable in ultras. Whilst when we were going through the combo for this earlier it does seem quite complicated to use it's not actually in all truth you can just go through an L spammo with this class if you so choose but it may just become slightly more temperamental for quite how it's going to go whether you're actually going to get your heal applied for example but to be quite honest with you it doesn't matter all that much. As we said earlier I put this one into the S tier. I undenied whether it's actually going to be more of an A star type class purely down to how the base class went but then the more I used it the more I actually started to enjoy it and I thought you know what with the support elements we've got on there having a decay it's actually pretty decent. Farming with this class is essentially irrelevant it's a single targeter so I wouldn't even bother. Moving on to PvP which is actually quite an interesting one when you come up against Frost Spirit Reaver as you'll see in a minute you will lose it just seems to happen Frost Spirit Reaver is of course ridiculously good at PvP as is Yami no Ronin but if you do get a little bit lucky with an enormous 14k critical hit in there then you're going to be doing quite well but like I said a Frost Spirit Reaver does us in I lost to a Frost Spirit Reaver loads that could have just been a me problem for all I know but usually when the trend's going quite that badly and you know a bit of running around doesn't always do us the biggest favours. Against the Cav it did okay this time it won another time it lost so it is playable in PvP it could be quite fun to muck around with it but again not too many people really play the PvP so we're not going to focus on that all that much. Anyway folks as always thank you very much for watching please do leave the video a like and of course subscribe and let me know down below which class we should review next. I'm thinking we go for healer. Until next time have a lovely day.